Good morning, I'm Richard Hake. 618, 35 degrees right now in New York. My name is Ido Rodriguez, I'm an artist. I'm originally from uh, Havana, Cuba. I grew up in a small town called El Gabriel, about an hour south of Havana. I came here during the Mariel boat lift in 1980. The governor of Texas, Bill Clements, says the president has literally opened the floodgates, placing no limitations on the number of Cubans entering the United States. The downside of it was really my family missing who we left behind. There was a lot of um, anxiety and angst about family. And at that time, we didn't really know when we would see them again. And that was scary and, and very difficult. And then I didn't return to Cuba until 1994. That was a big shock, you know, because 14 years later, I arrived in Cuba, and it was 10 times worse than how we, we had left. That's when it, it hit me, wow, uh, my life really did change completely because my parents took this, this turn, this decision to leave. This is a, this is a series of, of um, actually Cuban science fiction books that I've been doing. So they're trying to introduce Cuban science fiction into the United States because Cuban science fiction um, does a lot of things where they, they hide and they, they, they talk about what's happening in society but through science fiction. And they did that through the 80s and 90s. And uh, it's getting picked up here in the United States. So they asked me to do the covers for it. I drew for fun as a kid, you know, not that seriously. But uh, when I arrived in the US, it became kind of like a communication tool sometimes. Like uh, if I didn't know how to say something, I would draw it for my teacher or for someone in class. This is a map of the United States. So as you can see, Texas, Florida. So it's a map inside about 10 or 15 cigar boxes. I grew up with my grandfather smoking cigars, so I like, uh, I just like the, how that feels. I like the, the smell that comes from the boxes. And sometimes I use them for my artwork. And this was a map that I was asked to do by Amtrak. Coloring is something that I always had in my work that I think just came from my culture and my background. The colors that I used were very strong and uh, very saturated. I never thought about it. That's just the way I see things. That's the way I do things. Studying fine arts, you're not told what to do. You're told you have to figure out what you want to paint. And then that's when you start thinking more about your identity where you come from, where you might get ideas from. And that's when I started thinking more about uh, Cuba and using it in my artwork. On my work, I'm very aggressive and very direct. I'm not going to sit back and just accept what's happening. I'm going to fight with what I have right now, which is my work. You're looking at live pictures out of Charlottesville, Virginia. This is where violent clashes have broken out between white nationalists and counter protests there. You had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. This was most recently on the events in Charlottesville. I had shown him with a, a KKK hood in the past, and every time I did it, I'm like, oh, am I going too far? Oh, let's see. I sent it to the editor of Der Spiegel, and they agreed. And, uh, you know, they called it um, the, the true face of Donald Trump. The same week, I was hired by Time Magazine to do one on the same story. This uh, image of um, a neo-Nazi with the American flag, this was all, all over the press as well. When it's on the cover of Time Magazine, you have to talk about it. It sits on your coffee table at your family's house for a week. You see it on a newsstand. You have to talk to your kids about this when this shows up. So that's why I do strong covers, because I want people to have conversations. And that's the point of magazine covers, is to start conversations and get people to deal with the facts. When you're printing, you come up with some really like fine prints, mm -hmm. and those I, I, I sell to people that want to collect them. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh, in the process you come up with really junky and then these I, I, I put up on the streets, you know, there's mistakes, all sorts of things that happen in the process. I'm always fascinated about how people deal with art in different contexts. So from a museum, to a street, to a magazine cover, to a painting, to online. I do things in the city and environment sometimes. I like the interaction. I like getting things out of the studio and I like getting things off magazine covers and seeing how the world deals with it in a different format. These are all different venues that, that our work can be shown and shared. Once you go out to the street and you start putting up a poster, you're sometimes surrounded by people immediately and you have live conversations about what you're doing. That's I fun to me. Part. And seeing how right, my work right, interacts right, with right, other right, things right. in the wall or with matter. the environment. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just put it there like two hours ago. I'm gonna give you these two also. All right. That is so fresh. So I like I like to see what happens with my images once they get out. I'd definitely like to do more of that and see what happens when people kind of interact with them. We're here at uh, Copa Union, and this is the, uh, an exhibit that I'm in uh, um, called uh, We the People. It's about the Constitution, and I was uh, asked to create a poster on the 10th Amendment, and that's it, down there. So there's gonna be on, an opening here tonight. The current uh, exhibit is put together by a, a, a design firm called Thought Matter. They asked these 10 designers to create a poster campaign. And it's sort of a visual way for people to learn about these amendments on the street, uh, street posters. Thank you very much. Yeah. They have great space here. Yeah. Your, your, both of your work. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> really make this come alive. They pulled off uh, randomly what amendment you were going to do. And I was given the 10th amendment. And uh, graphically, for me, the X of 10 was very strong. So I like that image of the X, and I created hindsight are fighting, but they're also being tied down a bit. And the, the amendment states that anything that's not written in the Constitution goes back to the states or to the people. I have things inside of me that I'm trying to get out all the time. Trying to match what's in my head to what's on the paper, to me, is a really interesting challenge. If you're an artist, it's something that you're always going to be obsessed about. Years ago, someone asked me what I did for fun, and I said, drawing. Sometimes people will say, oh, that's, that, that's your soul, or that's, your, that's you. And I said, no, it's actually it's something that I made, and it's, it's sort of reflecting what's on my mind, but it's not totally what's really on my mind. Mm -hmm. 